Hey guys, thanks for watching Be Better Golf. This is a match between myself and Ben. This is kind of an interesting setup to this story. You guys may remember Ben and Michael Ascari who have been on the channel before. This is Michael and uh, Ben who was on this channel maybe like a year and a half ago. Um, well, Michael has been telling me for the last year that Ben wants to take me out Ben wants to uh, beat me and embarrass me on my own channel and all this stuff. Well, apparently uh, Ben had no idea Michael was saying this, but I didn't know that. So at this point, um, when I um, we all met up for this match that you're about to see between Ben and I, I am thinking that Ben like has some kind of grudge against me or something. And uh, because Michael had been telling me that, you know, Ben really wants to beat you on your channel and everything. Ben isn't happy about the way you played last time and he really wants to beat you. And so this is the match between Ben and myself. Turns out Ben wasn't saying any of that stuff and uh, he really didn't care, but he did want to, he did want to just kind of play again. All right, so that was a okay drive. It went a little bit left, but it was really solid, very far. It would have been bad before they cut that tree out. There was a big gigantic tree on the left that uh, was famously cut out of this course. This is El Dorado Park Golf Course in Long Beach, California. This is Ben, my opponent for the day. Ben hit a good drive right down the middle. Down ben the middle. played on this channel, I think, almost two years ago, and then he had a skateboarding accident and broke his wrist and had a very long rehab before he was able to play golf again. And uh, he's been, oh no, he broke his ankle. He broke his ankle really badly. So he now uh, kind of walks with a bit of a limp and stuff, and he's got many pins in his ankle. But uh, he's, there's no real pain or anything. It's just kind of stiff for it. For it. But I mean, it, it was like an angulated, very bad break of his ankle. All right, so after my drive, I hit a good layup spot shot to here. Ben hit an okay layup shot as well. Alright, so here this is a wedge shot that this has kind of been a typical, this is a bad shot you're about to say. It's kind of been a typical problem with my wedges sometimes when I try to, when I don't warm up and my first couple wedges of the day like on the range are a lot of times thin. So it's not until I kind of get my timing right that that I started hitting my wedges decently. And uh, I think that has something to do with a bit of a raise up that I have in my backswing. Just affects my swing bottom just a little bit. Hard green that ran that bunker shot out to there. So that is an unforced error taking me to one over par. Ben also made a bogey on this hole. After kind of a, a poor approach shot. So we're all tied at this moment, going into the 11th hole here at El Dorado, which is like 378 yards. There's Michael. You guys remember Michael from the channel. He was on a few times. Uh, probably most notably in the Long Beach match play, he played in the I believe it was the, the semi-final two years ago. So not this last summer, but the summer before. He played really, really well. Made it to a very high level in that tournament. It was a good drive by me right down the middle. Michael recently just missed out on qualifying for the Monday qualifier for the LA Open by um, just, I think, one shot. He had like a double bogey on his 17th or 16th hole and ended up missing it by one shot. You know, the th he was down the Thursday qualifier tr trying to get into the Monday. So he's been playing some good golf recently. All right, here's Ben. His, his drive went to the left. So he's got kind of a, a clear line here. Punches it out and it goes directly into it that never tree. Ever came out. I think it's up there. Oh, no. Never to be seen again. 
as Liam says. Went right into the tree, never came back. So Ben, and then Ben hit that one over the green. So he's he's looking at probably a pretty high number here. So same thing. The wedges. Watch the level on my head. I come up a little bit, and then so I thinned it into the back bunker, which is just awful. Perfect drive. Like hit it like it's cold out, and I hit it 285 or something like that. And then I'm in that bunker right in front of us. There's Ben pitching over it onto the green and then this bunker I didn't really realize there's very very little sand in this bunker so listen to this see it just rejected I tried to hit it fat like you're supposed to or whatever just it rejected my club and ended up thinning it so this is a bad start this is a very bad start bogeying the first hole up a six any six on the car is terrible but I'm basically starting with two sixes here so after and two two awesome drives so i'm i've been playing well so this was this was disappointing and at this point i'm still thinking that uh i'm playing this very intense serious grudge match so it wasn't until later that i kind of found out the the real scoop on, on what was going on so this is me for bogey Trying to save bogey from the fringe. No. So that's, that's a six. So six on the first hole, six on the second hole. So when you're trying to shoot 36 or better, and you use 12 strokes on the first two holes, that's that's pretty bad. Ben had a triple bogey on the second hole. Very, very uh, rough hole for Ben. All right, so this is 190 yards. This is a five iron. Trying to hit a bit of a fade, it just it came up short left of the hole. Here's Ben. You can just see, look where it looks like Ben's club face is pointed. It was actually an okay shot, a pretty good move through the ball. Just the ball went exactly where his club face was pointed, which was dramatically to the left. Here's Ben pitching out of the rough. To the hole, thinning over the back. All right, so here I'm pitching from basically like a really good lie. Made even better, you know, because the grass is wet. It's always a little easier to pitch from wet grass. That impact was not great. That's the impact, but shallow enough to be okay. But your margin of error can be okay if you uh, kind of attack the ball in such a way that if you're a little thin or a little fat it'll still turn out okay all right so good par there any par on a par three is i'm happy with that's the side that missed on all right so this is the hole where there's water left you it's always a difficult hole here there's there's water left that is you can't really in the afternoon you can drive past the water but this time of day you can't I killed that ball really good drive down the right hand side of the fairway and now Ben's up Ben has been through a bunch of different swing philosophies kind of like, kind of like myself and he practices a ton off of a mat in his backyard but I don't know how much he's been getting to play solid impact just just blocked out to the right a little bit okay so I have to loft this in the air just a little bit to get over that tree with no leaves that you guys see this is 104 yards I have a 54 degree wedge so basically I have to hit all of it or even maybe just slightly more than all of it because my 54 degree wedge normally should go 100. Then chips over the green and then comes back to it and has that for bogey. And he's gonna finish here. All right, so Ben's in for bogey and 
I'm putting for uh, Elves of Green and Regulation, so this is for Birdie. This green, since it's a long hole, the shape of this green is immaculate. It's just awesome. So yeah, par in this hole is really good. I've played skins games out here where par has paid a lot of money on that hole. Some days, and even in Long Beach Open, anybody's happy with par there. All right, so uh, two pars in a row for me. Ben had a another tough hole, and this is a short par for really not a crazy challenge on this one. It's it's narrow with trees on both sides, but it's just it's as hard as you want to make it. If you try to get nuts and try to you know really drive it way down there, it can. It, you can turn it into a hard hole, but if you just take it for what it is, it's not that hard. Yeah, Alright, so here's Ben hit hit a good drive down the right hand side, and this is I think Ben's best swing of the day. Really well balanced, and he just hit it fifteen yards past the hole. So he was told me later that he was swinging poorly and he knew it. So he was. That's the catch twenty two of of not hitting the ball well, is that you start adjusting your yardages to hit it poorly. But then you actually, when you do hit it well, it flies way too far. So it's really really hard. It's a vicious circle, downward spiral when you're playing bad. All right. So another part for me, and this hole. It's kind of the bowling alley hole that I always talk about. They did uh, remove some trees on the right-hand side of this hole, so it's a little bit better. You can see the the water flinging off of that. I hit a, a very solid drive up the right-hand side, actually just a little bit right of that tree, that green tree on the right-hand side of the fairway. The iPhone 10 is just like uh, has basically HDR built into it and that's how you look in the dark spots of that the trees above Ben's head and HDR is high dynamic range so you can still see tonal differences in the brightest spots and the darkest spots which I think for golf is is really huge especially because we play golf outside under the sun where there's real bright spots and then in the shadows there's real dark spots so it's one of the reasons I really like this my Sony camera that I have, I think, is better, but I think the, you know, in general, it's sharper, it's, it's more uh, versatile, better zoom and stuff, but the HDR feature on the iPhone 10 is, is better than this one. All right, so that's another par for me. No. So I have a five-stroke lead on Ben, and, and sometime around this point, um, I had said to Ben, so Michael has been saying you were gonna, you were really geared up to smash me, to destroy me in this match. And and Ben Ben looked at Michael and he said, "What? I told you. Why are you still telling him that?" This, and Michael just started laughing. So, All right, I had a very good drive down the right hand side. Ben hit it to the left, and uh, he's kind of scrambling down the left hand side of the fairway. So if you guys saw my last vlog, I drove it just a little bit short, but this same kind of position. And this is the kind of stuff that you have to be playing golf to, to really know how to score. So this time I learned from that mistake and instead of landing it on the green and hoping that it would stop, I actually landed that like four or five I yards short. From yesterday. I can flash back to yet the shot I had here yesterday. This was longer, but I mean, I had hit it longer here, so this was a shorter one, but better angle much better result so I landed it actually on the fairway four or five yard, yards short of the green and then it rolled up to the hole so that's the kind of created creativity that you're not just gonna like practice on the driving range and come up with shots like that and yesterday that shot was a bogey because I hit it which came out to like 40 feet and today this is a birdie putt from seven feet or so so but short putts are very hard to make in this hole all right but another par so after the six six start i've parred uh every hole since then so 
getting the game back together a little bit, really, really eager to see what would happen if right now I'm playing nine holes a week. That's the amount of golf that I get in. And I practice about every other day. So I'm really eager to see what would happen if I really started. A lot of players tell me, like really good players tell me, I mean, this is ridiculous, but it's, it's I think, true. You need to be playing three times a week to be sharp at golf. So, which is very difficult for anybody to do. So, but whether it's difficult or not doesn't mean it, it might not be true. I think just the demands of being very good at golf or very sharp in your own game of golf are, are really high as far as time-wise. Right, so uh, Ben has uh, bogeyed that hole. This is for par, and I'm thinking if I make this, the match should effectively be over. So going into the par 5, 18th hole, 505 yards. And here I'm going to try to hit it very hard. See, that's the problem I have. When I start hitting the ball in the center of the face and start hitting it like pretty well, I always start over swinging because I, I start trying to get more and more out of it. So that was a little bit of an overswing there. It was solid, but it was up, up the right. Bomb. Ben's starting to swing a lot better and hit it right down the middle and long too. Michael. Hit a poor shot there, but not in that bad of a spot. All right, so this is um, a shot that I would normally probably hit a layup, but I'm not really going to this day. So I want this to curve from left to right, and it's above my feet, so I kind of have to dramatically hold the face open, which is what that kind of rebound was about. And I hit a good shot. I was happy with that one. I didn't get it on the green. I wasn't really trying to, but I got it. Instead of a layup, I got a kind of a pitch and a putt. All right, and here is Ben from the fairway going for the green. Missed in the right spot, so Ben will be short left of the green. You can see Ben's ball just ahead of mine. My ball just didn't quite slice what I, what I thought I would. So really trying to have good tempo on this shot of about... 35 or 40 yards. So I'm trying to land it at about 20 and roll it the rest of the way. Tempo is pretty good there. And those are the kinds of shots like that shot there. If you had one shot to practice to improve your general ball striking, I would say get that shot down. Because it'll be a useful shot to have on par fours and par fives. There's a birdie for Ben. All right, so Ben... At least breaks bogey par, he told me. At least, he, at least he made that. It was uh, certainly the worst round he's had in like two years, he told me. So, and then birdie for me. So 30, 38 for me. All right, so one under after the, the bad start. Thanks for watching, everybody. Oh, what was I saying about that 40-yard shot that I want to say? Oh, basically doing that shot will improve your iron shots. Getting that feel down will do really well for your iron shots you know going out and practicing all your iron shots will probably not improve your pitching at all though. thanks for watching everybody hit the subscribe button some big stuff coming up oh also we had sold out the be better golf school coming up in orlando on march 17th and 18th but then we had some more people who wanted to come to the school so we've added another instructor one of the guys from the mike bender golf academy who is who uh, Tony has identified has signed up for the school as well so now we have enough instructors to be able to take one more student email me contact be better golf at gmail.com I'll tell you all about it and I will uh, get you all set up if you're interested in attending this amazing school with uh, Tony Lutzak Mike Bender will be giving a presentation there I'll be there and uh, at the what I think is the world's best golf instruction facility. Okay. Talk to you later. Bye.